Welcome home, home, my lady. No, I'm quite fond of the rising stones. Lord Fortuno is not to hear of this visit. And I should also like the children to have their gifts, ere my husband makes his return. As you wish, my lady. No, Mistress Alice, if you'd accompany me upstairs. We shan't be long. The twins have been sending letters home from time to time, recounting their latest adventures. I am sure they withhold certain details, of course, if only to keep me from worrying. Yet a mother worries all the same. In the early days especially, I tried to support them as best I could, sending the Scions coin and other such donations. Fortunately, they have found the strength to overcome adversity time and time again. Their words grow more confident with every letter their depictions more vivid. The triumphs and defeats, the joys and sorrows. It is clear that they have come to find value in every experience. But of those they treasure most, it would seem that meeting you might be the most impactful. Why, since that fateful day, I do believe there has not been a single missive in which you were not mentioned by name. It is plain they care for you, and I am glad they have such a steadfast companion watching over them. Under normal circumstances, I would offer you tea, but alas, these are anything but. In any event, why don't you keep me company whilst we await my children's return? Perhaps you might regale me with a tale or two of your exploits. what to expect. Mother, I... Oh, look how well it fits you. And the style is to your liking. It's perfect. Exactly what I would have chosen. But please, tell me you had something different made for Alpha now. Naturally, you are hardly little children anymore. And while I shall miss dressing you in those precious matching outfits, I must respect the individuals you have grown to become. See for yourself. Thank 
you for the splendid clothes, Mother. Stylish, comfortable, and eminently practical. I am so glad you like them. They are, however, missing one final touch. If you'd allow me, Master Alphano. these a sage's tools of the trade they belonged to your father though he may as well be chained to his desk these days as a student he was often called upon to venture into the field he wielded those armaments both to heal and to harm in no few battles None so fierce as those you two have braved, perhaps, but battles nonetheless. Thus did I pull them out of storage, to show you that he was not always the man who stands in vehement opposition to you now. <laughs> and also because it would be a terrible waste of ridiculously expensive House Leveilleur commissioned artistry. These devices are quite difficult to master, but someone of your extensive experience should soon have them darting about with grace and aplomb. May the wisdom in that crystal serve you well. And please, try to find common ground with your father, that you might come and go without need for this awful subterfuge. We will, Mother. I promise. My final gifts to you, before you run off, are an observation and a suggestion. Firstly, Fortuno has ever been a serious man, but it was only after you were born that he truly lost himself in his work. I may not know the forum's inner workings, but I know your father's. The timing of that change in him holds some significance. Secondly, do not seek to best your father with words. Far better that you simply show him. Let him discover the merit of your actions, after they cannot be undone. shall take your wisdom to heart. Thank you again for these gifts, and farewell for now. Safe travels, my children. Eat well, stay warm, and keep your friends close. Tuned to the crystal in Thavnir. You are? Oh, I would have preferred more test subjects. Oh, well, never mind. If our three travelers could line up here, please. Right there, 
just fine. Take a deep breath and I'll soon have you soaring through the ether. Oh, and um, one last thing. You might experience a teensy-weensy touch of violent ethereal sickness. Good luck! What? Thavne, home to city-state Rods Athar. Rising from the southeast waters of the Bounty, this Isle of Plenty served as the battleground for a conflict between two peoples. Their cultures bled into one another until a unique amalgamation was distilled from the chaos, in a process not unlike their precious alchemy. Once solidified as a single nation, an adamant stance of neutrality would hold invaders at bay for a time. Now across this vibrant isle creeps a fog of malice. What choice do you have? What chance? Against such an insidious foe. Fairer faces after a bout of bad shellfish. Let me bring you something to drink. That should help settle your bellies. There was a note with Kryle's instructions. Don't let Estinian roam the markets alone. <laughs> He's alarmingly bad with coin. Their dress marks them as alchemists. I see no evidence of injury or poison. Thinkest thou they but slumber? I believe so. Whether it is by choice is another question entirely. Oh, we have guests. 
You must excuse the poor welcome. Long days and longer nights have taken their toll, as you can see. I am Vashan, servant to the satrap. My task was, in fact, to wake these good men and women, if you will allow. People of the great work, I come bearing new scales. Mm. Scales? We have new scales? Yes, my friends. Gather round. I have them right here. Now I can continue my experiment. Many thanks. One for me. Those are dragon scales. Yes, such materials are vital to their most pressing research. And we are fortunate to have them. Our experiments are so close to bearing fruit. Soon we will have a talisman capable of nullifying the etheric emissions from that accursed tower. D did I say something wrong? Are you not here with Varshan? Wait, who are you people? Of course, you're the one Cryo said. The warrior of light we've been waiting for. This is a day of celebration. Praise be to Cinderova! The winds have shifted. I feel it. The end to our toil is near. I feel it too. My head hasn't been this clear in days. Tell me, how did you acquire those scales? Curious that it concerns you so. But worry not, and they were freely given by the dragon with whom our satrap has forged a lawful pact. That is well. You must be quite familiar with Dragon King, yes? Is their congealed blood I see on your weapon? Hmm. Speaking of dragon blood, you yourself have been infused with it, have you not? I should like to draw a file or two, if so. Now, see here. Come along, come along. I must insist that you visit our laboratory. Cease your shoving, or so help me. Oh dear, your poor companion. What with the new scales and your timely arrival, my colleagues are a little giddy with excitement. No harm will come to him, I promise. Meanwhile, shall we find a quiet place to talk? As you may have guessed, I am Nidana, the alchemist who sent a request to your mistress, Cryo. We have workshops across the nation collaborating on this research project. But it is here, at the great work, where I collate our results. Come with me, all of you, and I can explain the crux of the situation.
Yes, that would be Raj Zadhan. Hardly anyone has been allowed in or out since our troubles with the tower began. The faithful citizens huddle inside the city walls, and commerce has all but ground to a standstill. I pity the satrap, the trials he must be facing. Completely! Without the satrap and his line, Raj and Han would not exist. Long ago, this island was home to two tribes of Matanga, the Gajasura and the Arkasodra. When the Aura came to these shores, it was the Arkasodra with whom they joined forces. Together they defeated the war like Gajasura, forcing them to flee Thavnair altogether. Peace and prosperity reigned for a time until a clan of Hyor from the mainland decided they wanted the island for themselves. It was a direct ancestor of the present satrap who arbitrated that conflict and welded the warring factions into the nation we know today. And ever since, a member of that esteemed lineage has inherited this somewhat unique position. You see, by and large, the state is run by the people. But when problems arise, it is the satrap who mediates a solution. The stability provided by the satrap is what has allowed Raj Adhan to thrive all these years. And it was the satrap himself who entrusted us with this duty. We will not fail him, nor our countrymen. What is the delay with the vessel? I told you I need to adjust those ratios. I come all this way to admire one of my splendid towers. And what do I find? Fools attempting to ward off its tempering influence with magic trinkets. I seem to recall a similar experiment in ages past. What was that man's name? Oh, something. Oe? Oh, another, another body, another, another time. time. Who could be expected to remember every trivial detail? Allowing them to construct such handy talismans would be counterproductive to my plans. And yet, I find myself deathly curious. How will they manage this feat with the limited knowledge and resources at their disposal? <laughs> Complications be damned. For we cannot escape the nature of our souls. And I, as ever, am my own worst enemy. I see our taskmasters have allowed you a moment's respite as well.
to hand it to these alchemists. They are determined to see this endeavor of theirs succeed. I've never been one for blind optimism, but I sincerely get the sense they're close to a breakthrough. They had better be, or all this effort was for naught. The peoples of Eorzea, of the Far East, of Tavne, children of this star united in common cause against a dire threat. Yet ere they succumbed to suicidal madness, were not the Telophoroi born of her body as were we? They who cling to life and the promise of the morrow's dawn against they who desire death and an ending of their own orchestration. The victors of this war alone will hold the right to answer the question of existence, of its meaning, and its worth. Poetic and ominous to a fault, that said. If it's an existential debate in nature, then our arguments might not be as persuasive as you'd think. Van Daniel wants to die and take everyone with him in an orgy of pain and suffering. An utterly vile and unforgivable idea. And yet, when spat upon by fate and wailing in the deepest pit of despair, who among us can say they have not entertained similar thoughts? There are nights black as pitch, bereft of hope, and no words of comfort can reach you. And it's all you can do to grit your teeth and choke back the bile. The more you see and suffer life's injustices, the more difficult they become to bear. Vengeance is nurtured in similar soil. Though your anger has a broader focus, the sentiment is much the same. A fervent desire to destroy others, to see them drown in torment, as you have. That about sums it up. The will to endure is not always as strong as the urge to burn it all down and salt the earth. Survival be damned. It's a struggle, often close and brutal. Indeed. Well... I, for one, shall pray survival proveth more appealing in the end. As will I. Besides, our chances are much improved when we've the company of others committed to the cause of life. Our vengeful dragoon here is proof of that. What is it? What did you see? Van Daniel, are you sure? If he knows we've been working on a countermeasure. It holds. The vessel holds. This is the one. At long last. Finally created a talisman strong enough to withstand our experiments. We've named it a warding scale for the time being. With this in your possession, your soul should be completely shielded from corruptive ether. Afforded such protection, any one of us may approach the towers without fear. Thou hast mine admiration. Tis an invention of historical significance. Thank you for your kind words. But I would prefer you keep them unsaid until we test the talisman's efficacy in the field. It is for the next stage of our plan that we summoned you in the first place, to accompany me to the Tower Resort. Should the scale prove effective, as I very much hope it will, then you'll have little to do. But should the effect be weaker than anticipated, I must ask that you restrain me. 
or knock me senseless. Either way, we are fortunate to have you with us. Nidana, I... I are you certain you wish to do this? If others are to trust our creations, then we must have faith in them first. And as the senior researcher, it falls to me to lead by example. But should I fail to return, then learn what you can from this attempt and apply it to the next. Our work must continue. Is that clear? We'll keep an eye on the place while you're away. Assuming Fang Daniel is lurking about, there's no telling what mischief he has in mind for us, or you. Be on your guard. Shall we be on our way? I'll have one of the soldiers at the hatchery prepare us a boat, and we can set out from the northern shore. I'll see you then. should soon cross the threshold of the tower's influence. Any moment now. It's working! And you? You are still yourself? Then I'd like to see how it fares closer to the tower if we could. So good. The scale's protection appears to be holding. If we can just make it to the tower's entrance. A few more steps. to the sisters we made it and the scale has proven itself to be everything we hoped it would be now we can focus on production once we've equipped and returned with an entire survey team this menace will soon give up its secrets only hurt yourself thrashing about like that. Stop! Oh, you can't do this! Please!
A little late for heroics, I'm afraid. Hmm. The similarities are striking. My, my! Such hostility! Never before has my artistry so displeased. My patrons of old would have positively squealed in delight. Though, between you and me, I find gushing praise exhausting. Allow me to tell you a story. Surely you've yet to hear the one about Van Daniel, the sundered Asian. I inherited the position and the soul of the Van Daniel who sat on the convocation in the time of the final days, theoretically speaking. Practically speaking, that fact is of no consequence. I was born and lived as, well, me. Eventually, I was recruited into the Asians and imbued with the former Fan Daniel's knowledge and memories, but I never felt that they were truly a part of who I am. Perhaps if I told you who I was before my Asian embrace, although that chapter too is a past I've long since discarded. I have it on good authority. You've poked your nose into an elegant ruin or two. Yes? Then I expect you've heard of me. The old. Um, at your service. Imagine a nation of unbridled prosperity. Every need met, day after day of unbroken, unshakable peace. Existence fulfilled. And ripe for decay. You are a genius without peer, Amon. However do you conceive of such delightful experiments? That fool was beside himself with panic when he awoke with the head of a bull. <laughs> Even his cries for help emerged as so much guttural lowing. Oh, oh, the memory of it. <laughs> my poor sides. My friends and I were so consumed by laughter, we struggled to breathe. No more than entertainment for bored wastrels ignorant of its worth. My all-consuming work. But it was not their only indulgence. For they were ever hungry for stimulation. Slaves to the slightest hint that amusement was afoot. Our nation was ailing, but I would see the poison purged. I resurrected a legend, our first and greatest emperor. And just as I had planned, he set our wayward empire back on the path of conquest. An inexhaustible ambition carried us onwards, always onwards. Yet, he who delivered to us such glory was not to be satisfied. Heed me, Armon. 
No matter how vast one's empire, or full one's treasure vault, all is rendered meaningless by death. In the end, all is lost. as well as I, that the Emperor stands to lose this war. And so I have come to claim you. For while your methods leave something to be desired, we cannot deny the results of your work. And as fortune would have it, the seat of Van Daniel, your rightful seat, lies vacant and waiting. Take your place amongst your peers rather than die a pointless death amidst the ashes of your doomed nation. Send one of your clones to the Crystal Tower that you might see for yourself. See what lies ahead. The fall of the Empire affirm the truth, majestic and tragic, as the Emperor foresaw. Scheme as you like, build as you will, nothing endures. What is life but a brief jaunt ending in emptiness? So, so easily, easily distracted. distracted. Why, 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 I almost, almost left, left without, without saying, saying farewell. farewell. As for As your friend, friend, you need not worry. worry. These, These pawns, pawns are far more useful, useful to me alive as fuel for, for the primates. primates. Uh, uh, uh. If you attempt to pull them free, they will die. So, 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 enjoy, enjoy tackling, tackling that, that conundrum, conundrum with your, with your comrades. comrades. We, we shall meet, meet again. again. Not so much as my spies. Oh, no, no. But, but somewhere, somewhere more, more suitably grandiose. Your, your favorite, favorite playmate, playmate is ever so easy to see.